Hello, it's been a while since I've done a long-term YouTube video. I, I apologize for anybody who's been wanting it. I just haven't. I, I keep forgetting. Uh, so yeah, where to begin? I think just like I said in the little mini clips that I do on TikTok or Instagram, by the way, I really recommend following that if you use those platforms. So then you can get those little 30 second uh, clips every moon cycle in case I forget to do long versions. I, I, I seek to do long versions, just there's a lot in my mind, so I'm getting kind of distracted. But yeah, so um, just like I said for that video that I just made, we have moon in Scorpio, and of course we have the sun in Leo. Let's, let's focus on the moon first. That energy is a very intense emotional energy. Whenever we experience it every month, we're getting deep into our own feelings, deep into our 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 childhood you know the cause and effect of our experiences how that has influenced us emotionally how that has influenced us as per behavior what we're guarded about what we're fearful about etc so this is always a beautiful opportunity when the moon is in scorpio to go deep and to make conscious that which is subconscious and when we do that we can have a wonderful moon in scorpio transit we can you know it's said that moon in scorpio it inhabits the absolute spectrum of emotional experiences and feelings and that's very true where it can be just like oh my god the absolute most challenging difficult i am just depressed i'm going through stuff and and if a person you know stick i don't wish to generalize too much it'll be hard to like say there's just one solution like it depends on the person and whatnot but if a person really seeks to make just like we were talking about seeks to make this energy conscious and we're talking about natal moon and scorpio but this is something we can all gather from you know for this transit over the next two days uh, again today tomorrow and even the first part of sunday if a person really just seeks to make conscious that which is unconscious uh, as per their emotions then they're going to be able to then work with those emotions guide them not feel like it's a tsunami that came out of nowhere and overwhelm them because they're gonna know oh that's my trigger oh this is what i'm afraid of oh that's that happened because of this thing in childhood you know again the water moons in general it's re it's important for everyone to do this but it's really important for the water moons to get deep into our emotions consciously to understand and speaking as a double water moon myself i have moon in cancer in the house of pisces i also have scorpio in the fourth house cusp so because of my moon in cancer that that you know fourth house cusp scorpio that have a lot in common with moon and scorpios in a lot of ways so i'm from personal experience too the more that we dive into our emotions consciously the more that we can bring out the best and that's the other side of the spectrum which is incredible which is truly to go from feeling all those negative things we were talking about before to being able to be the happiest most stable person on the planet and it's so cool because water <clears throat> of course water you know isn't obviously stable like a, a mountain would be right but then you look at things like the grand canyon and we see how metaphorically and literally in that case but this is you know we're drawing this metaphorically that water energy is able to it's the most powerful element in so many ways as bruce lee would say be like water it it conforms to wherever it it the the container that it's in it flows it's free and yet it can crash like a wave it's it's like a tsunami it can be a hurricane you know well, it's a little bit more air and water but you get my point it's it's very powerful and th when it's when we've worked with our moon in Scorpio, or in this case, of course, the transiting moon in Scorpio, we all can have just a wonderful time of being really happy and very into our emotions and um, being conscious of things. So if we do have the temptation to be fearful or overprotective or paranoid, you know, the challenging parts of the moon in Scorpio or feeling down, we're able to guide ourselves out of that kind of darkness, the Mariana Trench of emotions to the light, to the surface again, and be like, okay, cool, I, this is, I'm still in the water, I'm still feeling the emotions, I'm not trying to run away from the emotions, you know, I'm enjoying it, or, or embracing it at least, and that leads to being able to enjoy it in the long term. So I think that's really important, especially because we have the Sun in Leo, so emotions are very powerful in general. The Sun in Leo is a fire energy, it's subjective, it, it's connected to the moon in a lot of ways, that, that subjective um, realm of being. So. I think you know the big challenge here with the sun and moon is to make sure that we don't we don't fall into unconscious behavior that makes us dramatic that makes us uh, act like children in a negative sense you know acting like children in a positive sense is probably the best part of this spectrum for today tomorrow first part of Saturday, or Sunday and then you know temper tantrums fearful you know all these things we have to honor our inner child and recognize that we are all children of the universe ultimately none of us have all the answers none of us you know there's no figuring it all out but we can figure out enough you know and that's that's good um but i think that 
it's important to honor that innocence and vulnerability that inner child within us but also to recognize you know uh for all of us who are adults we're also adults and we can take care of our inner child you know so i think that's really the key to take care of your inner child over the next couple of days and this is also a good check-in point of how have i been taking care of my inner child for the last month the last years decades you know lifetime um, this is a, this is a pretty good wake up call. Uh, the emotions you cannot run from. You can't really run from anything, but the emotions, especially, is like, no, I feel this. <laughs> Obviously, it's, it can be different experiences for different people, but I think it's that's really good to look at our emotions consciously during this. I mean, we can make incredible breakthroughs. I think, especially for Saturday, but you know, for all of this transit, because transiting Moon is going to be op is already, and especially Saturday will be directly opposite transiting Uranus. So this is an excellent opportunity to make truly like phenomenal breakthroughs. I think, especially if we're, and this is true for any time to make phenomenal breakthroughs. But I think, especially considering Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius and with Mercury and Virgo and conjunct Mars. We'll get into that. There's other stuff there. That's really good. But um, if we apply knowledge, if we apply awareness, if we seek to understand, again, like we were saying, to go deeper into our emotions, we can make breakthroughs that completely change our life over the next couple of days. And, you know, if we don't need them, if we've already made them, great, you know, or if we're not quite there or whatever, then it's at least a huge stepping stone forward. I think because we have a grand cross going on. What this is, is sun, you know, grand cross is four astronomical bodies that are in relation to the earth on each side, northwest, south, and east. Yes. Uh, I don't know if it's specifically northwest, south, and east, but you get what I'm saying. It's it's like a square almost, and that's why we call it a grand cross, because they're Saturn and Jupiter technically are, are square the moon, which is square sun, which is square Uranus, which is square Jupiter and Saturn. So whenever there's a grand cross, it's actually a great opportunity to move forward, but it is a feeling of being stuck, because ultimately... The, the energies that we're working with are very different. You know, it's like the, the needs of the sun and the moon and their particular placements right now are very similar. There's, there's overlap in certain ways, but they're also very different. Sun and Leo is more about the ego and expression, more exuberant, more uh, extroverted. Moon and Scorpio is introverted. It's more internal, but you know, emotion and expression. There's, so with each of these parts of the Grand Cross, they do have things in common. Um, and we are able to move things forward. But I think in general, we are, we're all feeling a sense of, and we've been feeling for the last several, last three weeks, almost exactly actually, um, with Jupiter and Saturn. We've had a T-square with Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and the sun. And so there's been a lot of tension. There's been a lot of, I'm making progress, but I'm still like, I'm dealing with something that is long-term with Jupiter and Saturn and Uranus, especially these are outer planets. They take a long time. Uh, Saturn will be in Aquarius, not only for all of this year, but next year and the first half of the year after that, you know? So there's there are certain aspects of going on as per the collective for all of us as humanity, um, as well as, of course, on the microcosmic scale for all of us as individuals. And um, these these changes aren't gonna change overnight. So there is a certain tension that we're we're working with that we just have to kind of make peace with or be patient with, right? But also with this Grand Cross, again, especially over the next couple of days, we can make incredible strides as per understanding our emotions, understanding what we feel, what we're doing with our lives, how we're expressing ourselves in, in ways that feel really good, how we maybe need to express ourselves in ways that, that are really necessary for us uh, to, to break through to the other side, you know, uh, to quote one of my favorite singers and lyricists, Jim Morrison. This is a beautiful opportunity to understand and break through. So something that's good to keep in mind, uh, even if you're feeling that tension, focus on what you can grow with, focus on how you can reframe the tension and understand it from a new perspective. I think the last thing to cover for, for this video is Mercury and Mars being conjunct. You know, this is a really also, you know, there's always wonderful opportunities, truly. I know that that there are obviously huge trials and challenges that we have to go through. Uh, every opportunity does have its challenge, certainly. And let's cover that real quick, but then let's get into the positives. I think overwhelming, there's, there's huge positives here. But I think that, of course, with this particular conjunction, especially for the next like four days with Venus and Virgo, there is a big tendency to overthink, to judge ourselves, to judge others. I have a funny story. I'm glad I remembered this. I was thinking I needed to share this. <laughs> so yesterday I'm driving and this illustrates actually real quick 
we have tremendous logical capabilities and that's one of the greatest gifts during this time let's set goals and let's reach them let's get all the details let's really like hone things down let's let's make things practical let's make things work let's clean up our environment let's clean up our, our act internally um, let's make sure that we're ingesting good food good fuel and we're, we're working out regularly we're doing yoga you know this is this is an, uh, an energy that's all about the material realm our bodies our finances our professional skills let's get all of that together you know our, our physical uh, possessions let's fix things let's get things nice and clean like I was saying this is a beautiful opportunity for all of that as well as you know it could be applied in a lot of different ways of also like mental health helping us grow in that sense because all this Jupiter and Saturn energy again all that is very focused on uh, an information and approaching things from an intellectual place so we can anything that's wrong we can get right over I mean not to generalize too much some things obviously will take a lot more time as life but we can make huge strides and again over the next couple of days especially but we're really looking at like the next week week and a half where Mercury and Mars are working together and really like laser beam focus and able to just get it bam 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 i i got things done that i've been thinking about or worried about for years you know or or at least for like the last month you know or, or whatever frame of reference whatever time period it might be but that's the potential is we can make major progress during this time so the more that we we really push healthily we don't want to stress ourselves out we don't want to overthink you know let's take our time let's pace ourselves let's enjoy it but um the more that we we dream bigger and, and seek to really address like the largest problems in our lives, the more that we're going to be able to to solve them and resolve them and move forward and not have that like knot of of energy sucking worry or thought process even in our mind. So that's really good. Uh, oh, the funny story. Okay, cool. So <laughs> mm. Something that occurred to me with this story that I'll get into in a moment is Neptune is in Pisces, of course, like it's been since 2012, like it will be since until 2025, um, sometime in 2025. I want to say summer, but I'm not sure. It doesn't matter. Um, <clears throat> Mercury, Mars, and Venus, but I think Mercury and Mars especially are opposite Neptune. Now, it's not down to the degree. We'll get, we'll get into that once that time comes, but that's a good couple weeks away for both of these astronomical bodies for Mercury and Mars. Um... So as much as there is that logical focus and the rational focus, there is the Neptune in Pisces too, which is very subconsciously connected and a bit spacey, especially with Mercury opposite it, but Mars too, you know, kind of out of it. And I think this is the perfect, this story illustrates, I think the key, let me get to the moral first. I think the moral of the story is don't, no, no, let's get into the story. So, so I'm driving yesterday, just like this. And I'm driving all over the place now. I'm, I'm driving yesterday and um, I'm taking a left onto a highway. And uh, the person, I'm trying to remember, the person in front of me was dangerously got in my, my lane. They had kind of drifted. They weren't using their signal, you know. And and for, I, I, don't, I strive to be pretty chill and relaxed overall and keep things in perspective. So I wasn't really bothered, but I, it was a sense of like, what the hell? Like, this person's not paying attention. This, could have caused an accident and and I noticed at that point I started doing the same thing so I'm judging them yeah I mean there's more analysis but still even overthinking at this point it's like okay yeah that person fucked up whatever keep going with your day I started drifting I did the exact same thing I hear a honk from behind I'm like where the fuck did that person come from thank god I didn't get into an accident but it was a powerful example I, immediately I was like oh wow you know I'm judging them or or i don't think i was even judging but it was dangerously close maybe there's a bit i don't know but i was certainly like analyzing like mm, they fucked up and this is how and you know I, with these energies is very either of these things judging or analyzing too much is very much the challenge here and then i did the exact same thing so i think that's the great lesson here is don't point and this is too important in general but i think especially it's important for these kind of these energies Especially, especially for the next like four days when Venus is in Virgo too. Don't judge other people. Again, important in general. Essential for the next half a week or so and really for the next several weeks. Um, don't judge other people. Just stay focused on your own thing. Get stuff done. Move forward. You know, something that, that seems like a universal message that was coming up in a reading I was doing for a friend yesterday is um, uh, don't think, just do. 
don't think, do. That seems to be the vibe of the energies. Obviously, we want to be thinking, we want to be preparing our actions with rational thought. You know, I don't mean just like, oh, let's just do random shit. I don't mean that. What I'm saying is don't, when you know what you have to do and you know what your goal is, it's all figured out mentally. You know, you have the vision in your, your mind's eye and everything. Just go do it. Don't, don't keep thinking about it. These energies are about thinking but it's not like Gemini energy where it's like abstract vision manifest in you know creating palaces in the sky it's Virgo energy it's practical it's right here real world right now so yeah I think that's that's really good to keep in mind uh, that's pretty much everything infinite love to you my friends as always I'm doing readings feel free to get to contact me in the about section is the info to contact with me namaste